You don't need a lament to be the God you were. You have chosen to call me your. You were God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You were God all by yourself. You were God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You were God all by yourself. In your hand, light out of darkness. Being a man to be the God you were, but you too have to mercy. You call me your. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You were God all by yourself. You were God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You were God all by yourself. You were God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You were God all by yourself. Oh, you were God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You were God all by yourself. You were God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You were God all by yourself. Holy ba, in Kalabasantariba. Yes, Lord. From beginning to the end, you were Lord. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Holy Basin Kala Basia. Hem Baba Baba Huri Lobobo. Ramba Santari Lobobo. Rahi Basia Rahilo Bobosia. Hem Bahuri Bahim Kala Basantari Lobobo. Hem Baba Baba Huri Lobobo Santariba. Rahi Basia. Yes, Lord. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Hallelujah. 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 I praise the name of the living God. I thank the I thank Lord Jesus today for making us to see this brand new day, this beautiful day, this beautiful Sunday. He's so bright and sunny outside. God has made you and I to be opportune to be alive today. To him be all the glory. To him be all the honor. To him be all the adoration. I thank you all for joining me today on this platform. And as you know, my name is Esther Olaikadia. I welcome you to my platform titled, Jesus Christ is my message prophetic ministry I, I welcome you all and I pray that as you have joined me that as you listen you and I shall never be the same again in the name of Jesus I thank God for your life I thank God I give glory to God for your life that you are alive today and he's God all over your life nobody can contest that in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus now I commit myself into your hands, O oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, Father, Lord, that you use me as your oracle. Take charge of my lips, O oh Lord. Make it like a cloven tongue. And speak through me, O oh Lord, from your throne of grace and mercy. Father, speak your heart, O oh God. I, 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 I decrease so that you may increase in me, O oh God. 
I surrender myself to you as your vessel. Father, speak your word and let lives be changed on this platform in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you all for joining me. And as we all know, we started a new series titled, You Are God All By Yourself. There is no one else that can be God in your life. There is no other God except God in your life and in my life. Nobody can contest that. And the topic that we started last week, I would implore all of us, and uh, uh, please, please share, share, share as you join. I just want to thank you all, my brothers and sisters that has joined me on this platform. I want to thank my cousin Tina Baye. I want to thank Pastor Ola. I want to thank um, um, uh, Pastor uh, uh, every other pastor that has joined me here. I want to greet you all. If I don't uh, uh, mention your name, please don't be angry. I'm trying to see if I can mention the names. Thank you, Sister Sharon Adetokubo. Thank you, Abisola. Thank you, my cousin, Sister uh, Tina. Thank you, Pastor Adams Patrick. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dan Daniel Oluomo. Thank you everyone as you have joined me on this platform. To God be all the glory. I tell you that you are not here by mistake. The Bible says that the footsteps of the, of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. The Lord has ordered your footsteps to be on this platform today. And I tell you that the words that shall come out, proceed out of my mouth. It's not me. It is from the throne of grace. The word is for you and it is equally for me. You and I are going to benefit from the word in the name of Jesus. We shall not be hearers of the word alone. We shall be hearers. Of, we shall be doers of the word as well in Jesus' name. Now, as I was saying, I started a new series last week titled, You Are God All By Yourself. And we picked a topic under it called, The Egyptians In Your Life. And we enumerated. I'm going to briefly, in about a minute, summarize what was discussed last week. But please, 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 I will implore all of us to please visit my platform for last week, last week Sunday, and um, um, and watch the, 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 the broadcast. It is a sequel to this. Just a brief summarization, a two-minute summarization of what was spoken last week. We talked about Egyptians in your life. Who are the Egyptians in your life? What makes you to be in Egypt? How do you know if you are in Egypt? Who are the Egyptians in your life? Egyptians represent hardship in your life. Egyptians represent blockages, hardships, hindrances, enslavement, bondages, death, drainage. Um, 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 the, the enemy represents the enemies present in your life. The enemies, remember, in the book of John 10:10 10, 10 says that the, the thief has come in not to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That is the work of the enemy in your life. That is the work of the Egyptians in your life. It is, the Egyptians have come to damage. They have come to destroy. If I will take you back to the story of Joseph, where he was sold on a slave trade to Egypt. And in Egypt, it, the, 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 the king of Egypt, Egyptians, they, they enslaved them. They traumatized their lives. They were not free. They were bond men. They were bond women. They worked all day. They lit a little, but they worked all day. They, were, they did not accumulate wealth. They had nothing. They lived in penury. And at the point, they were killing their firstborns. That is the Egyptians, what Egyptians represent in our lives. It represents lack of favor. When you are in Egypt, you cannot have favor. It represents closed doors. Egyptians represent curses. The Bible says that Christ has taken away the curse of the costless on the tree. Yes, he has taken them all away. So the curse of the costless shall not stand. Egyptians represent curses in our lives. Egyptians represent closed doors. Closed doors to breakthrough. Closed doors to increase. Closed doors to enlargement. Egyptians represent serpents, scorpions, diseases, pandemic. Egyptians represent desert experience. When you are in a lack, when you are in lack, when you are in penury, you are in a desert. You are having an Egyptian in your life. Egyptians represent the valley experience. That is when you, when, when you are in deep uh, depression. When, you, when you, 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 you are just not happy because of what is going on. When you are enslaved. Amen? Egyptians represent evil linkages. When you are linked with evil, evil people, evil family, evil friends, evil surrounding, evil, evil uh, uh, generational causes, 
it, that is what Egypt represents in our lives. It represents lack. When you just lack, you don't have enough, you are begging, you are borrowing from here to there. It represents spiritual heaviness. When you have spiritual heaviness, you cannot pray, you cannot rise, you cannot stand. It, it suppresses you down. That is what Egyptian represents in our lives. It represents heavy loads, heavy yokes. Egyptians represent chains and bondages, fruitlessness, unprofitability. It represents paralysis, losses, the bottom line, the bottom syndrome. When you find yourself at the bottom, not always at the top. When you find yourself to be the ladder people climb or to get up there and you yourself are not going up. There is an Egyptian in your life. It represents lack of growth. It represents um, demonic soul ties. The people that surround you in Egypt, they are people that, you know, are, are just, are, are, are not Christians. They are people that are, are, are there to just bother you. And they are there to drain from you. They are there to, 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 to kill, to steal from you. It represents evil altars. Evil altars. When evil altars are raised up against you, when they just gather together and place something there uh, that represents you so that they can manipulate your life. It represents so many things. It represents oppression, depression, envious people, occultic connection. When you are connected occultically, when you are in occultic connection to, the, to occultic people and you don't even know. The Egyptians in your life, it represents demonic penetration into your life. Egyptians can also be your household family, your household, your household, your, your family, direct family, direct linkages to you. Anybody can represent Egyptians in your life. We enumerated more on this when we talked about who can represent, who can be the Egypt, an Egyptian in your life. Not only friends outside, your family members can be an Egyptian in your life. We talked about last week. We talked about the story of Esau. How his brother stole his birthright. Jacob became, Jacob was the brother of Esau. Esau was entitled to the birthright because the, the firstborn of the family received a, a special birthright. But Jacob stole it away from him with a pot of porridge. Esau lost his calling, he lost his mandate, he lost his focus, he lost his destiny. We also talked about how Rebecca. His own mother constituted uh, 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 the, the, the loss of his birthright. His own mother, your own mother can constitute an Egyptian in your life. They are called household wickedness. Esau's mother conspired against Esau and made Jacob, the junior brother, to steal the birthright from the senior brother that truly is entitled to it. It belongs to Esau. Rebecca connived with the son, with with her, the, the, the junior brother. She 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 was um, um untruthful to her husband. She was untruthful to her son. So Rebecca was an Egyptian in Esau's life. That is the mother of Esau, and also an Egyptian to her husband's life. We talked about um how other situations. Where Jacob himself that stole the birthright from his brother Esau, how he too went through his own. Remember that what you reap, you, what you sow, you shall reap. He reaped, he sold uh, conspiracy, he sold dishonesty, he conspired, he deceived, he deceived his brother. So he received it in multiple pro, uh, fold from his uncle Laban. Laban changes wages seven times so that he will fall, so that he will fail, so that he will be in penury. But thank God, God was with Jacob. But he reaped what he sowed. Jacob also, he, 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 he wanted to marry um, um, Laban's daughter, who was Rachel, but Laban again deceived him. Deceived him. And instead of working seven years to marry the wife, he worked 14 years and got two. He didn't want the first one. They, they, they pushed Leah on him. And then he finally got the second one. So he too he suffered. And finally, we also saw where his own children deceived him. When they sold Joseph away. They sold Joseph away into, uh, into uh, slavery to Egypt. 
and they came back and lied to him. They told him that, listen, your son is dead. They also constituted an Egyptian in his life because it grieved him. It was his favorite son. Joseph, um, jo uh, uh, Joseph was his favorite son. Jacob ripped a lot from what he sold. Remember, what the, 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 the wages of sin is that there's always a wage to sin. When you give your life to Jesus, fine, you are pardoned, you are forgiven. That does not mean you will not reap from that sin that you committed. You will pay for it. You will pay for it. You are forgiven, but you will pay for the sin. Many be believers have this they, they are so controversial about this point but I tell you, read the word of God, You, when you walk in sin and live in sin and you deceive people, if when you repent, you will be forgiven but the blood of Jesus will not prevent you from paying for that sin, you will pay for it it will not destroy you it will not damage you, but you will pay for it, amen so jo Jacob suffered a lot, now we talked about Joseph himself how his own brothers deceived him. How, sorry, how they sold him out. How they conspired against him. How they planned to kill him. How they turned their back on him. Your own brothers can be an Egyptian in your life. These are house of wickedness. Remember the word of God says. It says in Matthew 10, 36. It is an established fact in God's word. Above. That enemies or slots against you are best facilitated through your own kindred. The Yoruba Dajed will say, Tikule o bakpani, tode o lekpani. Your enemies or slots against you are best facilitated. Best facilitated through your own kindred. That is written in the book of Matthew 10, 36. When the enemies outside is about to get you, they use the enemies inside. They use the enemies in the household. They use the household wickedness against you. They get to you through the one that is closest to you. Hallelujah. So all this happened, Joseph was sold as slaves. They did not know that God will continue to order his footsteps and he will fulfill his destiny. So that is just a summary of what we talked about the last time that we were on air. That I was uh, on, on broadcast last week Sunday. Now we are continuing. We are still talking about household wickedness. We, let's talk about David. Let's see what happened to David. David's son, Absalom, became an Egyptian in his life. How did Absalom succeed in doing that? Absalom started winning the heart of the people of Israel against his father. He won it to himself against his father. He conspired with Ahitophel, David's best friend, and to dethrone David. And there was war. And what happened? David suffered. He had to sojourn away from Israel. He had to go into hiding with his people because of his son was after him to kill him. Your own son your own family, your own mother, your own sister, your own brother, your own anything. Anyone close to you can be an Egyptian in your life. Can be a source of downfall to you. And David, during the war, when war erupted, David was able to, 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 to succeed. He was able to win the war with the help of God and God killed Absalom by hanging him between the oak tree. And his head was hung on the tree and he was stabbed to death. We will not go into all of that because we discussed all of this also in the last discussion we had. Now, let us talk about Samson. Samson, members of his household also turned against him. We remember the story of Samson, how we married um, Delilah. And Delilah connived, she was able to get the secret of Samson, what was the source of his power, and she connived with members of the household. And they brought Samson down. And Samson and the member of his household handed him over to his enemies. And they bound him, and they plucked out his eyes. And that was the end of his destiny. Samson's destiny was supposed to deliver the children of Israelites from the wickedness of the Philistines. 
Samson was supposed to be a tool in the hands of God. Samson had a mandate. Samson had a focus. That Samson had a script. Samson had a purpose. When God sent him, but this house of wickedness, they can, if you're not careful, they can destroy your purpose. They can destroy your destiny. They can destroy your mandate. They can de de destroy your, your focus, your vision. They can destroy your destiny. If you are not careful, his own wife was the source of his downfall. Hallelujah. We will read this in the book of Judges 16, 18 to 21. Now, finally, let us talk about Jesus Christ. If Jesus himself was deceived. He was connived against. Let us talk about Jesus. I want us to please open our books to the book of John, chapter 18. We're going to read from verses 1 to 3. John, chapter 18, verses 1 to 3. John, chapter 18, verses 1 to 3. Let us all please go there. John chapter 18, verses 1 to 3. I read. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook, Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted theater with his disciples. Now I'm going to pause here a little bit to talk about this. Jesus Christ, in the Bible says in the book of John chapter 18, verses 1 to 3, that Jesus Christ went forth with his disciples. They went to the brook Cedron, where was a garden. The, the other part of the Bible recorded the Bible as the Garden of Gethsemane. I was there when I traveled to, to Israel. I was there. The olive tree are still there till today where Jesus prayed his last prayers. Where he was arrested. If the garden is still there till today. The trees that were there when Jesus Christ was there are still there till today. I was there. Jesus was there and he was praying with his disciples. But what happened? Judas which betrayed him, he knew that Jesus Christ would be there. For Jesus oftentimes resorted there with his disciples. This is to say that the people close to you, they are the ones that know your whereabouts. They are the ones that know when you eat. They are the ones that know when you, you sleep. They are the ones that know where you play. They are the ones that know your place of work. They are the ones that know your favorite food. They are the ones that know your wife and your children. They are the one that knows all the secret things about you. The, the, the house of wickedness. The house of the Egyptians. They know everything about you. They know where you eat. They know where you sleep. They know your favorite colors. They know the clothes you, you wear. You sleep with them. You sup with them. You walk with them. They are your best friends. They are your helpers. They are your confidants. They are your sharers. They are your dependents. You lean on them for purpose. You lean on them for help. They are your body bearer. They are your body carer. They are supposed to be the shoulder that you lean upon. They are your counselors. They are your advisors. They are your go-to person. The go-to person that you go to when you need help. They are your secret sharer. What you cannot share with anybody in the world, you share it with them. They are your, your, your solace. You, when you talk to them, you feel good. When you talk to them, they tell you sweet words. They console you. They are your covering. You feel that they cover you. You feel that they got your back. They are your body. Your body, body. They are your mentors. You ask them which way to go. You ask them where to turn to. They are there. They are there. But you think they are there for you because they put up all this fucking. They put up all this front for you. They pretend to play all these roles in your life. They pretend to be these people, this person that you think they are in your life. But they are not. They are killers. They are stealers. They are destroyers. They are there to kill you. They are filled with envy. They are filled with venom 
against you. They are there to steal your blessings. They are there to dig a pit for you. So that when you are not looking, you can fall into it. They are there to, 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 to disgrace you. They want to see you shame totally. They want to see you lose everything you have gathered. They are the house of wickedness. They are pretenders. They are destroyers. They want to see you fall. They want to see you finish. If possible, they want to see you dead. Uh, Judas was this close to Jesus. He knew where Jesus goes at any point in time. When it is 8 a.m., he knows where Jesus will be. When it is 12 p.m., he knows where Jesus Christ will be. When it is 1 p.m., Judas knows where Jesus will be. When it is 8 p.m., he knows where Jesus will be. He was Jesus Christ's body, body. Christ saw, Christ put him in charge even of the treasury amongst the 12 disciples. He was in charge of the treasury. Judas is Kairos. He was the house of wickedness. He saw Jesus' house. He knew Jesus would be there at that time praying. And let us continue. I'm reading John 18. I started from verse 1. We are going on to, to 2. And Jesus also, and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes go there with his disciples. Judas then, having received a bond of men, and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, come at the altar with lanterns and torches and weapons. You see what I'm saying? Jesus, Judas came there. He had received some payments at the back. He has received some, 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 some feedback. He has received, in Nigeria we call it a good day. He has received some feedback, some payment. He has, he, they have buttered his pocket. They have gi given him some money. He has enriched himself in this work of deceit. And he went ahead and he deceived. And he, put, and he brought the, 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 the arresters. Those that are looking for Jesus to kill him, he brought them out to Jesus. He was the one that located him. Among the disciples, he was the one that pointed him out. That is what the work of the enemies in your life. That is the work of enemies in our lives. They are the ones that we pointed to the outsiders and said, that is him. That is him. They are the ones that we tell the enemies outside where to shoot their arrows, how to get us. How to pin us down. How to locate us. They are the ones that we direct them. They are the ones that we show them the way. They are killers. They are not friends. They are not families. They are house of wickedness. They are there to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus came. He brought men to arrest Jesus. He, and, he, and he was supposed to love Jesus. And Jesus Christ loved him. And we all know what happened. They arrested Jesus and they crucified him. And on the third day, he rose again. And all powers belong to him in heaven and on earth and underneath. That in the name of Jesus, every name must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And because of that act, because of that sacrifice, Judas thought he was doing evil to Jesus. But look at what happened. Jesus Christ rose again and he, he gave back to you and I. He gave back to the Christian dog. He Christ gave back to, 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 to Christianity. He gave back to you and I. He provided a home for you and I. He multiplied himself in you and I. He multiplied himself in the world. They thought they were doing evil. It was only one then when they killed him. But it became me billions on earth today. And that is you and I. Oh, we are all part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. When the enemy thought that they are digging a grave for you. When the enemy thought that they are, they are, they are destroying your life. When the enemy thought that they have created a blockage to keep you from going, to keep you from flying, to keep you from ascending. They are actually doing good for you. They are actually good because God will turn it around and make it good for you. And make it a blessing for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. Whoso breaketh an edge. A serpent will bite. Anyone that dig a pit for you will fall into 
it. Anyone that thought that they are doing evil concerning you, God will turn it around. And it will, and it will turn around for good for you. In the name of Jesus. And this happened to Jesus. And I tell you, because Jesus Christ got the victory over Judas and over all his enemies, over Satan, over the kingdom of darkness, you and I are bound to be victorious. Because the same Christ is in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Through tribulations, the Lord keeps your bones. No matter what tribulation you go through, the Lord will keep your bones. None of them shall be broken. None of them shall be broken. Nothing broken, nothing missing. I can tell you my own experience. I went through it, I tell you. I've been there with people I thought loved me. When the whole world was collapsing against me. When the whole world, it was like everything was done and finished. I'm talking about some decades ago. Some decades ago. And I gave my hope to this person. It was when I see this person that I'll be able to eat. Because she will talk me to, to eat. She will encourage me to eat. And I gave all my belongings to her. I had so much gold. I only used pure 18 karat gold then. Vanity upon vanity. I had it in abundance. I had gold in abundance. And I said, because I'm, I, I'm in turmoil, let me keep my gold with you. Because it can get missing and I won't know. And I don't even use it as much. I just buy them like collection. I had a lot and lot of pure gold. That if you sell today, you can use it to buy a house. And I gave it to her. I said, hold it for me. But what did this friend do? While she was being a solace for me. While she was being a shoulder for me to cry on. While she will encourage me. And I thought I had the best of friends. I thought I had the, 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 the body sharer. The, the one that knows my heart. The person that loves me. She was selling my gold. She was selling my gold. And when it was years after when I asked for my gold, I, she, it was gone. It was gone. And that was it. That was it. Vanity upon vanity. Thank God for that experience. Because today, I'm not, I don't go for gold. I don't go for anything. I, I put on anything I like that is beautiful. It doesn't have to be gold or anything. But I thank God. God showed me who it was. They can kill. They are filled with envy. I have been there before. I have had friends that whatever was going on in my home, I will talk to them. I will share it with them. I will say, this is what I'm experiencing. And they will say, oh, sorry. And they will be, 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 pretend to encourage me. But what did they do behind me? They go to tell my, my partner. They will recount everything I tell to them. They are there. They are lions. They are scorpions. They are there to be your, 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 your uh, hindrance. They are there to be a club wheel for you to fall. But thank God for Jesus. It will keep us standing. Hallelujah. He said, none of your bones shall be broken. The boom, first Peter, verse 2, 9, verse, first Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light that's what you are that's what i am a holy nation a chosen generation he has called us out he said nothing nothing shall harm us nothing shall be, be, be come against us i am telling you he said when they come to us like a flood they will the, 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 the spirit of the living god will raise up a standard against them that is the word of god for all our enemies in the name of Jesus. He said, when your enemies, uh, when they come towards you one way, they will flee several ways. Uh, because the greater one is on the inside of you than he that is in the world. The book of Jeremiah 29 says, uh, he said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God has good thoughts towards you and I every day. In spite of what the enemies may be having. In spite of what the enemies may be planning. God has plans for you. He has plans for me. And it is his plans that will stand. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the enemy? Will you believe the report of the doctors? Will you believe the report of the house of wickedness? No, my brethren. Believe the report of the Lord. 
The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Once he says, he will do it. So believe the report of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord is yea and amen. It will not come back to him void without accomplishing that which he has set it out to do. The word of God must come to pass in your life. If you believe, if you trust in him, if you give your life to Jesus, if you walk with Jesus, if you walk in his precepts, the Lord will keep you, he will engulf you, he will protect you. Hallelujah. That is the will of God for your life. That is the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. I tell you, he said, first John five, first John, first John chapter five, verse four says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith whosoever is born of God overcome the world this is the victory it is our faith faith is the substance of things not seen the evidence is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen you will see this in the book of Hebrews he talked about faith he talked about the fathers of faith and he talked about the importance of faith the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to serve God. You have to be a woman of faith. You have to be a man of faith. When you have faith, when you speak to this mountain to move, it will move. Because it is no longer you talking. It is Christ speaking through you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you should not be worried. He is with you. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping men dear for a night. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your joy is now. Your joy has come now. It is time for your joy. It is time for your joy to show forth. You have labored in the night time. You have been in labor. You have travelled so much. You have gone through persecutions in the house, in the hands of house of wickedness, even in the hands of outside wickedness. You have been persecuted. You have been destroyed. You have been you have been spoken about. You have been they have dug a pit for you. They have oppressed you. They have depressed you. But I tell you that you are more than a conqueror. You will surely win. You will surely bounce back. Because Christ is in you the hope of glory. The Bible says in the book of Romans 8, 37, that you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. And it says that you will not die. Psalm 118 verse 17 says, you will not die. You will live to declare the works of God in this land of the living. You shall not die. That is the word of God. He even said that the children he has given you, the children he has given you, they are for signs and they are for wonders. Because even the house of wickedness, they can work on your children to make them turn their back against you, to make them be unruly, to make them be bad children. But God is saying to you that he will be with you. He will not leave you. And I tell you, the Bible says that it no matter, no matter what door you have opened to the enemy, no matter what door that the enemy has penetrated into your life, it could be due to your carelessness, it could be due to your sinfulness. No matter, the important thing is to, is to close every door today. Today, close every door. Look around you. Who are the people that are close to you? Who are the people that pretend to be friends with you? When they take a show, and when they take a show, they will bring your own. All, all of you, you wear it to the party together, dancing. You don't know that they are mocking you. You wear the same clothes with them. You identify with them. But everybody, and the funny thing about it is that everybody else around you, they see through them. They know they are pretenders. They laugh at you. They say, look at her. She's stopping with the enemy. She's dancing with her enemy. She's doing and call with the enemy. They are wearing the same dress, the same shoes, the same hairdo. But they are our enemies. They are destroying her behind her back. But God is for you today. Look around you. Look at all the friends. Evaluate them. Shut all doors that you have opened, which they have penetrated into your life. Every door they have used to come into you. Every door they have used to 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 cause problems 
people in your life, shut them today. The important thing is to shut the door. Even the Bible, even God is saying to you that even if they are there legally, the scripture says they have to go. They have to go. It could be your mother, it could be your father, just like we have explained before. It could be your children, it could be your best friend, it could be at work, it could be anywhere. They have to go. They have to go. Enough is enough. You know why? Because God has forgiven your sins. Even if it was because of sin, God has forgiven your sins. Psalm 32 verse 1 says that blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Jesus Christ has covered your sins. Jesus Christ has washed it away. He has given you a new beginning. He is giving you a second chance today. Close all doors that you have opened to all unbefitting, unbefitting, unfriendly friends, unfriendly family members. Shut the door. You can love them. The Bible says that all no man nothing except love. So you have to love your fellow man. Love your neighbor. Yes, you can love them. But relationship is by choice. You do not have to have relationship with them. Love them, but don't have relationship with them. Because they are vipers. They have come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Hallelujah. Be watchful. Evaluate them. The book of Isaiah 41 says, I'm reading from verse 10 to 13. Isaiah 41, 10 to 13. He says, For that, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will keep thee. Yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against you, everyone that has gathered against you, anyone that has planned evil against you, they shall be ashamed. That's the word of God. I'm reading Isaiah 41. I'm starting from verse 11. Everyone that are, are incensed against you, the Bible says they shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. This is the word of God. Those that strive with thee, they will perish. Those that are against you, he said it, they, are, they shall be as nothing. God is saying that he got your back. He got you. Do not be worried. Do not be dismayed. I'm with you. If you read for that in, the, in, in verse 13, it says, For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto you, Fear not, I will help thee. God is saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. It is not the end of the world. Stop crying, stop weeping. You have traveled, weeping has endured for the night. Now joy has come. Psalm 30 verse 5, joy has come. Your morning has come. This is your morning. Hallelujah. Verse 12 of the same chapter says, Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against you shall be as nothing, as a thing of naught. This is the word of God concerning your life. God is saying to you, fear not. God is saying to you, do not be ashamed. God is saying to you, do not be dismayed. God is saying to you that I'm with you. God is saying to you that you are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. They may gather together against you, but they will fall. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we are going to go into prayer. Against the Egyptians in your life. Against the house of wickedness in your life. And I will call out the prayers and I want to precede you. Please pray along with me. We are going to pray six points of prayers now. Concerning this message, concerning your life, concerning my life, I'm, I'm going to pray. Let us pray. Say this after me. Let every imagination against me wither from the roots. Let every imagination against me. <clears throat> Remember that when the evil workers, when they want to begin to gather and, and, and walk and to plan evil against you, they first of all imagine. They imagine you falling. 
they imagine you destroyed. They imagine you um, uh, 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 in the pit. Their imagination will begin to grow. And when they have the imagination, they begin to plan to carry it out against you. So you are going to pray. Let every imagination against me wither from the roots in the name of Jesus. Every imagination against you. Every imagination against me. Let it begin to wither now in the name of Jesus. I cast, I destroy it now. I have put it from its roots in the name of Jesus. Every imagination that is not in Christ, that does not succumb to the will of God in my life. Every imagination against me that does not bow down to the will of Christ. That does not agree with the will of God concerning my life, concerning your life. I command it to win it out in the name of Jesus. I destroy it. I destroy every evil imagination against my life. I destroy every evil imagination against your life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are going to pray. I cancel all enchantment, curses, and spells that are against me in the name of Jesus. I cancel all enchantments, all curses, all spells that are against me. And the evil workers, sometimes they use curses, sometimes they use spells, sometimes they create altars for your sake to destroy you. They will be putting oil on the, on the altar. They will be putting blood on the altar. They, uh, they, they go into their closet and they begin to do incantation. Now you are going to destroy. You are going to cancel every, uh, uh, evil, every evil pronouncement, every enchantment, uh, every curses, that has, every spells that has been spoken concerning you, concerning your family, concerning your loved ones. Begin to cancel it. In the name of Jesus, I cancel it. Uh, every demonic pronunciation concerning you and I. I declare it canceled. I wash it up with the blood of Jesus. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that it shall not stand. The Bible says I shall declare it in and it shall be established. That whatsoever I bind your neck shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever I lose your neck shall be loose in heaven. Therefore, if that be so, I decree and I declare that every evil pronunciation, every enchantment, every curses, every spell pronounced concerning me, pronounced concerning my children, concerning my loved ones, concerning you and your loved ones, is cancelled now by the reason of the blood. In the name of Jesus, I decree that I shall not stand. Every spoken word against your life, every spoke demonic word pronounced concerning your life, I decree that I shall not stand. In the name of Jesus, is cancelled. Is cancelled. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are still praying. Let the, every spirit of Herod, let every spirit of Herod, Goliath, and Pharaoh be disgraced and put to everlasting shame concerning my life. Every spirit of Herod against my life. Every spirit of Goliath that are conniving against my life. Every spirit of Pharaoh against my life. Let them be disgraced and be and put to everlasting shame. Let them be openly disgraced. Let them be put to everlasting shame. Every Herod. Herod did not want Jesus Christ to leave. He wanted to cut short Jesus Christ's destiny. He wanted to destroy Jesus. That was what Herod wanted to do. Every Herod, spirit of Herod in your life that wants to destroy you, that wants to cut short your destiny, I come against them. In the name of Jesus, I decree. Let them be put to everlasting shame. Let them be put to everlasting disgrace. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of Pharaoh that don't want the people to go, and the spirit of I will let you go, the spirit of I will not let you go to, to be free. Every spirit that is holding you captive, every spirit of his own that is holding you bondage, every bondage, every shackles, every chains of the enemy, I command it to lose his hold upon your life now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are still going to pray that let all demonic manipulations, weapons and devices, armed and changing my destiny be frustrated, neutralized and rendered impotent and destroyed forever in Jesus' name. Let all demonic manipulation, every demonic manipulation, that the enemies are manipulating against me. Every weapons and devices they are using. Every consultation they are consulting themselves concerning me. They are traveling to Ilori, traveling to Badagri to look for people to help them walk and conjunct, in, in, 
demonic manipulations against my life. Ah, oh God. If there be a God in heaven, I command in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, let them all be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I render their powers impotent. I render and neutralize all their weapons in the name of Jesus. I decree they shall not stand. Holy Bahin Kalabasia. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are still praying. Let all evil brought Casters of my name and my works, let them be silenced forever. All evil broadcasters concerning your life, all evil broadcasters concerning my life, you know them. They pretend to be your friend, but they go about, they go about gossiping about you. They go about tell, 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 they go outside to talk about you bought a car. Look at the candy body, it's even nonsense. Anything you achieve is nothing before them. They go about and they turn it around and they mess you up and they destroy you with their tongue. They go about uh, 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 proclaiming evil about you, evil news about you, evil uh, uh, portraying you in a bad way. They want people to hate you. They want people to judge you. They want people to condemn you. Every mouth that is doing this against you, I pray in the name of Jesus, let those mouths be silenced forever. In the name of Jesus. How God is going to silence them, I don't know. I don't care. I know that he's God and he can do all things. The Bible says that with God, all things are possible. Anyone proclaiming evil concerning you. Anyone telling tell, tell Barry evil concerning you. Talking evil about you. Spreading rumors of evil concerning you. I decree and I declare. Lord, silence their mouth. How is God going to do it? I don't know. I don't care. Maybe he will burden them with travail. He will traumatize their life. He will give them uh, problems that they will not even have time for you. Whichever way they're going to go about it. Whichever way God is going to do it. I don't know. But God, silence them forever. In the name of Jesus. Silence them for my sake. Silence them for your sake. In the name of Jesus. That they will not have time for me anymore. They will not even look my way. They will not even open their mouth to talk about me no more. Father, silence them. Father, keep them short. Father, silence those lips. Let those things never be able to talk about me again. Let them know that I serve a living God. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. I lose myself. From every satanic bondage, begin to lose yourself. From every satanic bondage, every strong man that is in charge of your life, uh, begin to bind it. Begin to bind the strong man in the name of Jesus. Holy Every strong man over your life, every strong man uh, that is manipulating your destiny, that is giving you problem in your household. Every strong man, wherever they may be, maybe they are in your country, maybe they are far away in another land, wherever they are, if they say that there is no distance in the spirit, wherever they are, the Bible says that they shall surely gather. In the book of Isaiah 54, they will gather, but because their gathering is not of God, they will fall for your sake. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that your enemies, he will turn them against themselves. He will cause chaos. He will cause pandemonium in their camp. They will begin to eat their own flesh. They will begin to drink their own blood. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be for you. So shall it be for me. In the name of Jesus. Holy Basin Calabar. I bind you, strong man. Strong man in charge of my house. Strong man in charge of my home. Strong man in charge of what belongs to me. I bind you today. And you shall never rise again. In the name of Jesus. We are now going to take the last point of prayer. He says, I pursue, overtake, and recover all my stolen blessings. I pursue. Overtake and recover all my stolen blessings. Begin to pursue them. Begin to pursue your enemies. Holy no babo. Hey, kala basanta riba siya. Hey, no babo. Huli basanta riba babo. Huli no babo. Rahi basanta riba siya. Pursue, overtake, and claim all what the enemy has stolen in your car. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pursue them. Holy Messiah, David asked God when the Philistines came into the into the camp of the Israelites and they ravaged Israel and they destroyed Israel and they stole the spoil. Now they scattered away their wives and their women in slaves and they took them all away. And David was away at that time. When he came back, he met a destroyed nation. He met Israel in disarray. He saw that the spoils have been taken. He saw that the women have been taken in slavery, even his own wives. And he inquired of the Lord. He said, oh God, should I pursue them? Should I overtake? Will I recover? And God said, pursue overtake and recover. So today I'm saying to you, begin to pursue your enemies. Begin to overtake them. Begin to recover all what belongs to you. David pursued them. David recovered them back. David took them all back. He took back his whole, his wives. He took them back. He, he, he got back all the women. Everyone that they took in slavery. Even the spoils that they stole. He took got them all back. Nothing missing. Nothing lost. It is the same God that we serve today. The same God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God, the God that has served by fire. Holy machine, Kalabasia. Hell of all, the God of Elijah. We serve the same God till today. When you speak it, it shall go forth and it shall accomplish that which you have said it out to be. There is no distance in the spirit. So therefore, in the name of Jesus, I pursue, I overtake my enemies. I take back all that has been stolen from me. I take back all that they have taken from my cup. All my blessings, all my breakthroughs, all my increase, all my enlargements, all my, 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 my blessings. I take them all back. Today is my day. Today is your day. Take them back in the name of Jesus. Rainbow Saint Calabar, who is a Santa in the bubble? Ramba Baba, Rahiba Santa in Basia. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 To God but the glory. I congratulate you today, my sisters. I congratulate you today, my brothers, and everyone watching me on this platform, and those that are still going to watch me. I congratulate you today. I say that today is your day. Today you have received your freedom. Today you have been set free. Today you have shut the doors to all our so wickedness. Today, today is the day. And I tell you today, today begin to march on, begin to excel, begin to soar high onto your day, onto your next level. In the name of Jesus, I decree unto your life, you will fulfill your destinies. Your children will fulfill your destinies. Nothing shall by no means hurt you. Nothing shall by no means stop you because you dwell in the second place of the most high and you abide under the shadow of the almighty in the name of Jesus because Christ is with you Christ is in you in the hope of glory greater one is on the inside of you you are meant to conquer you are meant to win you are meant to excel in the name of Jesus you are a bulldozer you are unstoppable you are unbreakable in the name of Jesus you are a winner and so shall it be in Jesus mighty name I pray amen congratulations everyone thank you for joining me today thank you thank you thank you for being with me on this part on all this while thank you for hearing the word thank you God thank I thank God for your life and I pray that this rest of this week I declare a breakthrough for you in Jesus name in the rest of this week I paralyze and neutralize every attacks of the enemy I decree that I shall not prosper in your life in Jesus name I declare this week a week of testimony a week of breakthrough a week of test of, of thanksgiving in your life in your home in the name of Jesus all that you have been pursuing from the beginning of this year this is your week the week to attain them the week to achieve them the week to so high, you will to get into your next level in the name of Jesus. This is your word, your week to rejoice in the name of Jesus. This is the way, the week that the Lord is turning your mess to a message. He's turning your mess to a message. You shall testify this week 
There shall be no evil that shall come near you. The Lord is going through the way. He has sent his angels charge over you to carry you in your in their hands so that you don't dash your feet against the stone. In the name of Jesus, and so shall it be for you this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all. In Jesus' name, amen. I shall be coming back again next week with another topic as the Lord permits. Thank you, Father. Thank you all. And have a blessed week. I put you in the hands of God for you to lead you. And you will not miss your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. From the king to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Ha ha! Yes, Lord. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Thank you and have a blessed week. Amen.